Good evening everyone, I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for what will be an interesting digression into one of these topics of physics. We're not going to get too heavily into it. We're just showing you some integral calculus applications with regards to the laws of motion. We don't need to get too heavy with this because this is something you'll study in physics. But my intent here is to show you how integral calculus can make some of these physics topics quite easy. And I can say through experience, never having known calculus when I was doing physics, because I did the general physics, not the calculus-based physics, had I known these calculus concepts, those physics concepts would have been much easier. We'll look at two important laws of motions. One is to do with acceleration and the other one is to do with velocity. Again, all of this falls within the realms of integrals of rates of change. We're looking at something which is something of this sort. You have an integral, but within this integral you have a derivative. Or you can do f derivative of t, d of t, but we're looking at integrals of rate of change. And I've stressed this concept quite heavily recently that when you have an acceleration, you do its integration, you lead to the velocity function. And when you do its integral, you end up at the position function. We don't have to do too much more, but you can always reverse this procedure back by means of derivative. We've talked about this. We are looking at two important laws of motion derivations two specific formula in this video and when you see these formula come about you'll know exactly what they are but you will see something here within the lens of integral calculus and everything I'm showing you here can be derived without having to use calculus but when you look at this procedure here you'll see and realize that calculus makes the derivation all the more easy. The first one has to do with acceleration. We all know acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. If you are to consider this as a function and you were to integrate this by means of integrating the rates of change, this is how it would come about. You would be looking at something with regards to this acceleration as dv over dt. And how do we proceed from here? It's not hard. Take the dt on the other side. dv is equal to acceleration dt. You can think of acceleration here as a constant, not as a variable. And then you will integrate this. When you integrate it, you're adding something like this. And you've seen something like this develop in the previous two videos where we've talked about velocity, position, and acceleration. Now we have to do this. The variable here, we can bring in our variable intervals. We can look everything here from initial velocity to final velocity. These are terms you should be familiar with. Time at zero and time at time t, whatever that might be. And now you have to integrate something which is basically a polynomial integral, which is easy. You know when nothing exists over here with regards to your variable, the variable comes into place because here we're looking at something at v to the power 0. Then you do plus 1, n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, right? Here you're looking at nothing with regards to the time variable. You do that divided by that. When you do this, you end up coming to this. You have the integral antiderivative come through and the integral goes away. What you end up coming with over here is the v, the velocity variable from Vf and V0 and then here you have an acceleration sitting outside as a constant and then the time variable comes here from time t to time 0. You do the upper and the lower and the difference of the two you get a Vf minus V0 is equal to At. The t, this right here, t coming in and the 0, the 0 is meaningless but when you solve for your final velocity you get the all important law of motion equation which you are all familiar with. Initial velocity plus acceleration times time is equal to your final velocity and this right here is one of the laws of motion. We don't have to do much with this in terms of calculation because I'm not here to do calculations of this type of equation because this is not a physics video. I'm just showing you how integral calculus can derive you one of these laws of motion when you think of everything with regards to integrals or rates of change or integrating a derivative you can easily come up to this formula. Now the previous derivation which you just saw related acceleration to velocity in this next one which is the next law of motion we will relate velocity to position and you know velocity you can think about velocity as change in distance over change in time and if you want to be more better with our writing we can write change in position divided by change in time. Now if you think about everything here with regards to derivatives you can say ds over dt. You can cross multiply this t upward and hit it with that velocity. Velocity with respect to dt is equal to ds. But what did we just derive? We derived an important equation where the final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus at. 
this right here is equal to VF which is essentially equal to the V we're looking at over here. You can substitute this right over here. Initial velocity plus AT with respect to this DT is equal to DS. Now you have everything which can be integrated. You have two rates of change which can be integrated and let's do that. When you integrate them your equations will become this. V0 or initial velocity plus AT with regards to DT is equal to DS. Now all we have to do is add our intervals. Our intervals are this with respect to what we're looking here in terms of variable. Here the variable is time so it will be zero. Here the variable is position so we can say initial position and we can just say final position with an SF or you can just write a capital S. You don't even have to put that F designation but I will. When you integrate this it's not hard. You're integrating a polynomial with regards to the time. Here you're integrating something which looks like this zero. When you integrate it, you do plus one and zero plus one that we know. Here we're looking at everything with regards to time, we know how to do it. Instead of looking at x, we're looking at time, t. So it's not hard. When you integrate this, you get the t pop up over here and here you get a t squared over 2 because here we're integrating with respect to time. You know you're looking at everything here from t and then 0, upper limit, lower limit. Here you just get the s come about, s f and s 0. When you do the definite integration over here, the, putting the t's and the zeros will lead you to exactly what you see, initial velocity time plus a t squared over 2. Here you'll actually get final position minus initial position, but we're looking at everything here with regards to the final position and let's bring it here. The final position of an object is equal to initial position, I'm taking this on the other side, initial position plus all of this, initial velocity times time plus half a t square and this right here is the all important law of motion which we all know from our study of physics derived solely here through integral calculus by understanding that we are doing an integral of a rate of change or you can say we are doing integral of derivatives and you can see it over here you can either look at this sf as just a plain capital s or you can just say sf it's all the same some people use this some people use that basically this law of motion says that the final position of an object is equal to its initial position plus this portion over here which is the sum of the product of initial velocity and time and the product of 0.5 acceleration and time square and I've shown you how we've derived this using integral of rate of change and how we've shown you to derive this so all of this was just the intent of this video to show you the perspective of laws of motion through this integral calculus lens and you can probably realize that integrating this these two equations using integral calculus is not hard you can also think of this as a quadratic equation because it indeed is a quadratic think about it you have your constant you have your first order you have your second order so you're looking at something which looks like f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c here's my c term here's my bx term here's my ax squared term order does not matter around these positives but this is exactly what we're looking at doing the derivation of this equation using quadratics is quite difficult or doing the derivation of the same equation using this framework is quite easy all you always have to remember is acceleration leads to velocity by means of integral and velocity leads to position by means of integral and you can reverse all of this by means of derivatives and this framework right here is what i've repeatedly talked about in my previous two videos now keep talking about it because this is how i wish i had been taught these topics by means of this framework it would have been so much easy for me anyhow now i'm sharing it with you i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching bye